Hey, what's up, guys? Clash Royale has become an abundance of chaos with evolutions and a lot of new changes to the game. Giving us the ability to adapt to the meta, play decks that are extremely obnoxious for opponents while having a ton of fun. You might monopolize the enjoyment of each match with these decks, but maybe your opponent will learn a thing or two. I switch it up with a different deck every day, and these were some of my favorite to play in the last month. It's time to break down these top tier strategies, break down some towers, and assert dominance. And huge heal love to everyone that's supporting the channel with Critical Insert Tag, making this channel possible. Yo, so first game of the day, we're gonna be playing the new Dagger Duchess. This is a phenomenal tower in this deck because it allows you to destroy wall breakers, even if your opponent goes in for like a spirit, it'll get shut down. And one of the coolest interactions is you can minimally defend against hog riders or any bridge bam and single elixir, so you don't have to spend near as much. Also, as you guys are about to see, the Dagger Duchess just melted that Dark Prince. The Cannoneer can't kill the Dark Prince to that extent, so it's very fun to be able to make interactions like that possible. Also, we should be able to activate King Tower here really reliably using our Mighty Miner. And the guy's gonna have Golem! He's got Firecracker with Golem! I thought it was a Hog Rider deck, but I was uh, very, very wrong. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go for a Poison here. We should be able to shut down the Night Witch. And he's gonna lose the majority of his health of the Golem too to the Mighty Miner. So, one of the things I was talking about earlier is you do not want to defend with buildings if you are given the opportunity. So, you guys just noticed that we melted the entire golem using Mighty Miner and nothing besides the fact that we were able to just go in for like Mighty Miner and cheap bait support cards that were able to crush the golem. And now we have a huge counter push with the Goblin Drill going on in the tower and he has literally nothing left over. So, this is a fun deck. I think out of all the decks that I've played recently, this is probably one of the best ones in the game. If you're using Dagger Duchess, you want to make sure that you're applying pressure when your opponent's down Elixir, because if they try to spam into you, the Dagger Duchess should be able to clean up anything like south of 5 Elixir. 5 Elixir or less will get disintegrated by the Dagger Duchess, and they'll spend all that Elixir on offense and they'll get nothing out of it. Meanwhile, when you go in for an aggressive play, they're going to pay a lot of Elixir to defend, and then not have anything because they've probably played something on the other side to apply pressure. It's difficult to match into this type of deck and always have the appropriate answers to yourself. Like, if you're going to have a defense, you might not have an offense, and uh, then things just kind of spiral out of control. Like, this guy's going in for a golem right now. He's going in for the offense. He doesn't have the defense. So he's forced to forfeit the tower here. I guess he can go in for the firecracker, but that's an ill-advised play. To go for the firecracker means that it's going to die on your side of the map. Sure, it baits out the poison, but if I'm able to defend this push, I will win the game. It's all coming down to this. Can I defend this, or will I get stomped? He's going to go for Elite Barbarians. Let's pull them back with the Skeletons, and then try to make sure that we have enough Elixir for the poison. Because if those Skeletons start to multiply, we could be screwed. We're going to Ice Spirit after he decides to go in for an aggressive play like that. Then we can go for a Log. We just wanted to make sure that we don't forfeit the potential of our defense. So that's why I went in for the Ice Spirit after he went for his arrows, just making sure that we have that capability of not getting predicted by spells. Wait, this guy is so aggressive. Wait, what if we just pull his Elite Barbarians back? His Elite Barbarians started a little bit closer to our tower where they ended up is like closer to his side. <laughs> that's ridiculous. They were on their path to the right-hand tower and not even close to the tower that he wanted to take. Yo, we gotta give me the Panda Schemes. What's up, man? So our strategy right now with this deck is to spam evolutions, as it typically is. But when you're aided by the three card cycle of the Mighty Miner, you can cycle Bomber, Skeletons, Ice Spirit and get back to a drill or go and spam Tesla so you can get to the evolution on defense. It's ridiculous. This is one of the best decks in the game right now for that reason. Also, it does primarily play the Dagger Duchess just because it allows you to defend minimalistically in single elixir and counter Hog Riders and counter win conditions that you typically wouldn't. Fortunately, the Hog Rider got a hit there because our Dagger Duchess ran out of ammo. The best way of punishing the Dagger Duchess is playing in double elixir, where you can spam a lot more elixir on the field. But in single elixir, when there's less units, the Dagger Duchess's efficiency on defense for pause elixir trades is unrivaled. She's better than the Cannoneer in single elixir by far. But when there's more units on the field, it's kind of a different story. So you want to be playing aggressive when your opponent doesn't have the potential of doing anything besides dropping like less than three or four elixir or maybe even five elixir into your dagger duchess because you eat it alive and then you make them kind of cry because they're wasting elixir every time they spam into it so again the big benefit of playing this deck is the quick card cycle 
So there's no way he's ever going to be able to outpace our Tesla. We should be able to drop our Tesla in the middle in this particular placement. And even if he earthquakes, you guys will notice when he goes in for a hog rider earthquake, he's going to miss the tower or he's going to go miss the Tesla. He has to pick which one he wants to hit. And actually, he can hit nothing. Wait. He's going to get hit up with damage from Evo Bomber. <laughs> shield your eyes because this guy might not be able to shield his tower. He went in for a log and a firecracker and wasted an absurd amount of elixir. I only spent two elixir there with the bomber. And he ended up dropping a solid five to defend that. And he's down so much right now. He has to go for a Tesla and still be on the back foot against our goblin drill. And we still got damage through the Tesla there. That's a four for four trade. And he dropped things on defense and he still got a bad trade there. That is so funny to me. Anyway, we can now go in for our Tesla again. And we'll show you guys the power of the evolved Tesla. We can go in for an Ice Spirit here. Notice how he's Earthquaking, but he's not Earthquaking on what he wants. He's literally going to oh, Earthquake on the wrong thing. Then we can go Ice Spirit on top of the Firecracker and watch if the Firecracker doesn't do as much damage as he's hoping for. we we'll just get one shot on our tower. And then we can go in for a Bomber as well. We can spam our Ice Spirit and then Skeletons. And I'm pretty sure that the Hog Rider gets one hit on our tower, max if that. Yeah, it only gets one. The Evolve Bomber though. Wow. 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 That's an entirely different story, my dude. That's two hits. That's three hits. And you're out of here. My man struck out. Usually, you know, it's three hits and you're out. But I guess it's three hits and your opponent's out is uh, the motto of the, <laughs> the Evolved Bomber with this deck. The GG and well played. There wasn't much he could do. Genuinely, one of the most fun games for us and probably one of the most frustrating ones for him if you can judge by his emotes. He is insanely aggravated by this deck. And genuinely, I don't blame him. We're just out of good luck and peace out. And... Just jump on to the next one. Yo, it's time to give this man zero mercy. He's going to be cycling Electro Spear in the back. That's just going to die to our tower anyway. But we're going to wait and see what he's going to be playing. Electro Spear makes me think it might be an Expo deck. The guy is relentlessly spamming emotes. So we have to mute him because I feel like that mental warfare will start to distract me the later the game gets. The cool thing that we have here is the ability to cycle Little Prince in the back and then immediately drop our Elixir Collector as well. The reason we're doing... Ooh, maybe not. Yeah, you know, what we can do is we can go for our P.E.K.K.A. really close to the Fisherman so the Fisherman doesn't pull the P.E.K.K.A. And the P.E.K.K.A. stays locked on the RG. That was good. Because if we dropped it earlier, that would have been horrific. Our opponent would have got such a nice trade where the Fisherman would have been able to pull the P.E.K.K.A. off the RG. Now we have huge counter push here. We could even go for a Giant as well if we really wanted to play aggressive. I think the P.E.K.K.A. snatches one hit on the tower, maybe two for lucky. Yo! I'm so happy I didn't zap that and overcommit. We can go in for our bomber in the back. Gonna be able to splash onto the ghost, and I think we're in a pretty good spot dropping the bomber as far back as we can with it still locking on the ghost, giving us more time to augment it with the Dark Prince, possibly? Yes! <laughs> wow, I timed that really well. We've got the Dark Prince and the Evo Bomber. Re oh my gosh! I was gonna say riling up and ready to pummel the tower, but we ate his evolution alive. That was a fantastic order of operations for us. And the Fisherman's out of cycle again. So if we Little Prince in the back and we go Giant at the river, I don't think he's going to be able to defend against this Giant effectively. So it should be better for us to do that and then hold the P.E.K.K.A. for his possible RG. Because if he doesn't have Fisherman in cycle and he Royal Giants into the P.E.K.K.A., he's dead. Like the RG is just going to be slaughtered. Alright, the other thing that I could do is I could pop this and then I could zap on top of the Fisherman so it doesn't kill the Giant immediately. And the Giant's able to get one extra shot. Oh, it's going to activate King Tower unfortunately, but still an overall decent interaction. He's going to lose the Phoenix. I can go in for an Elixir Collector here and then P.E.K.K.A. on top of his RG. There's a high likelihood that he's going to get back to another Fisherman if he cycles really quick. But I don't know if it's possible. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's trying to. So I guess it wasn't. He wanted to put all of his, I guess, money where his mouth is. And uh, being able to, you know, kind of laugh his way off of that situation. Ooh, what if we Evo uh, Zap in the face of the, the P.E.K.K.A.? Yo, we're going to be able to slaughter everything. The P.E.K.K.A. gets that last hit. And we secure the tower. There's a no way he's coming back anymore. With 24 seconds remaining, all I have to do is Dark Prince. Make sure the Fisherman pulls the Dark Prince. And then I P.E.K.K.A. directly on top of the RG. That's all gone. Roasted and toasted, my dudes. And we walk with a win. Most Giant decks have gigantic trouble against Royal Giant decks. You usually don't have a building or enough damage to kill the RG. But with the surprise P.E.K.K.A., you have enough power to slice it down in seconds. After going on a rampage against Royal Giant, we've rushed up to 2,600 in the world. Yo, this guy's got the Dagger Duchess banner. And of course, he's playing the Dagger Duchess itself. So our best strat is to go in for the drill in front of the tower. Generally, spamming more drills than your opponent guarantees victories. 
And uh, he's going to have Monk, which is phenomenal in the meta against Dagger Duchess because she rapid fires all of her shots and then the Monk just blasts them all back right at the tower. And it's so annoying. Anyway, fortunately for us, we do have the Princess Tower, so he's not going to be able to get as much damage. But he is slowly but surely knocking back the Valkyrie so then the Monk is trotting towards our tower. Kind of scary when that happens. Anyway, we're in a posture with our little Prince in the middle. I think he's going to lose the Phoenix. He's definitely going to be playing a Royal Giant deck. Please keep my little prince alive. Push it towards the tower so we can go and drop an ability. It would be so funny if that worked. Obviously, I don't think it's going to happen, but maybe we can make it happen. Can we pop the ability? Oh, sometimes the ability will just randomly come down like three seconds later. And if that worked out, he would have been furious. So I think he would have taken like upwards of 800 damage. Anyway, we're in a position where I can go for an Inferno Tower. It will melt the monk. He's not going to be able to reflect back anything for a while. And then we can also go in for... I think we just Valkyrie here. I think we have to because the Royal Giant's going to do infinitely more damage than that measly Royal Ghost. He's up a lot of damage right now. He's in a phenomenal position. I'm even going to give him a will play because he orchestrated an offense on both sides. He got a huge lead. And now we really need to pile on the pressure with Evo Bomber. Can we bounce back? I mean, the Evo Bomber is known for bouncing, so I believe... We're going to pop with the Little Prince ability. Hopefully he doesn't fish him in it early. He does kind of fish him in at a good time, but not like super, super early. We are going to log in the Skeletons. I think it's going to die. How much damage is he going to do to me, though? That's the real question. Do I have to Evo Bomber? I don't want to. I need this Evo Bomber to stay in our hand. Come on, man. That Royal Giant got another shot on my tower. Oh, my gosh. We're at 1,000 HP now. We're at 600. That's ridiculous, man. All right. Screw it. We're going to go same side. We kind of have to, right? Let's go for our Bomber. Hopefully he drops something on top. You know, the funny thing about it is when the 60 second timer was going down, I was thinking maybe if we body block our bomber with the 60 second timer, he doesn't see the bomber and he doesn't react to it because he looks at the timer on the screen. I feel really devious even thinking that. All right, this has to pull. This has to pull. I'm gonna pop the ability, pop the ability. Oh, look at the damage. Dang, bro. How does that feel, my guy? All right, cool. We take those. That is awesome. And we're forcing out arrows like that early as well. Wait, we want to go and drop the Valkyrie so then he doesn't get the ability. Oh, get outplayed, my guy. Imagine. This is this might be a comeback. There's actually a certifiable chance that I can slime this man. I kind of want to pop the ability again just for the memes. It's likely not going to do that well, but maybe it could do something. Also, if we pull his units off to the side and then we Evo Bomber, there's actually a chance. There's actually a freaking chance, my dudes. Please give me damage or give me death. We got a hit. Oh my gosh. Can I defend this though? I don't think so. I need to like Valkyrie, but it's, it, it's not going to work. Unless we can somehow go in for a log and then a tornado and not die to this RG. There's no way though. Oh, such a close game. Isn't that crazy? We almost made a comeback there despite being down so much tower health. Really good Royal Giant player though. We'll jump on the next one and bounce back there. All right, so kicking into it, we are going to be playing against someone with a Fisherman in the banner. There's a high likelihood that he's going to be playing a Royal Giant deck if he's actually got Fisherman. A cool tidbit of information is the Dagger Duchess fully eliminates a Fisherman without any damage on your tower. That means that you don't have to respond to it if you got the Dagger Duchess, and that's why the Dagger Duchess is played by almost every professional player in the game. Including me. And this deck allows you to defend minimalistically in single elixir with the Dagger Duchess. So you don't have to spend as much elixir on defense. So you can fling more bombers, more drills, and more mortars or more evolutions to become your full form of evil. And that is the way that you want to play Clash Royale at the highest level. It's weird, but that is the way that the game is played. It is absolute evolution cycle. Also, the bomber might splash onto the P.E.K.K.A. and hit the tower. I don't think he's going to hit the tower, but it does splash onto the P.E.K.K.A. That's very nice. We're gonna go for a Dark Goblin here as well. We should be able to pull the peck a little bit. We'll have to wait and see what he decides to do. Oh, he's actually going to have a Fisherman. Very cool. Now we can go for a Poison. Everything's dead. The reality of the situation is if you are rushing through with Bridge Bam and you overwhelm the Dagger Duchess, then it works really well. But if you can't kill the Dagger Duchess and really punish her when she doesn't have the daggers available, then you're just gonna get melted and you're gonna get a miserable Elixir trade. So right now, the Dagger Duchess is going to lose all of her daggers. He's forced to fire a ball on top of an Evo Bomber. And then we can go for a Dark Goblin and Skeletons on top of this Royal Ghost. I love going in for Skeleton Surround because it minimizes the amount of Elixir that I have to spend, enabling us much better defenses. I'm going to log here. I bet you, yeah, he does go in for that. 
I knew he was going to do something of the sort because he was up a little bit and we weren't really in the best card cycle. We also have to go skeletons to go and push back the Little Prince so it doesn't get extra shots on our tower. Looking like a pretty awful start, you know? Not necessarily what we wanted to see. Our opponent is currently up around 600 health and he also has identified that we are a spammer. So he's likely going to start going in the same side as us for the rest of the match. We're going to go for a mortar defensively because this allows us to get to the mortar evolution so it's not really a bad decision for us. Ooh, what if we go Ice Spirit and then we go in for a Bomber here? The Ice Spirit might jump, enabling the Fisherman to just stay in place so then we get extra damage. Might get another shot. That would have been so funny. Anyway, we can go in for Skeletons again on top of the Royal Ghost. The Ghost is Toast. And then we can go in for a Drill here. Oh, you know what we can do? I might be able to just get away with this. Spending way less Elixir than he wants me to. So I should just be able to go Skeletons here. Look at the Goblins. The Goblins are mobbing on our man. And then we can go for an Ice Spirit because the Goblin's going to be able to finish off the Mother Witch. And that worked out so well. I'm actually going to sack the Evo Bomber here so the Dark Goblin stays alive a little bit longer just to meme this man. I think the Dark Goblin takes tower. Yeah, he's just dead. He doesn't want to play anymore. He knew he was forfeiting the game to poison. So we walk away with a win. GG, well played and peace out, brother. As you can see, this deck's got really solid defenses with the evil mortar, being able to blast goblins on top of whatever spam your opponent's got. While you've got the Ice Spirit to stun, the log knock things back, and the Dark Goblin and Bomber for high damage. All right, we got the last game of the day. What's up, Mr. King? What's up? So, I wonder what Red King is going to do because y'all already know we've been playing against a lot of Golem decks today. I think that, you know, we're due for some cycle spam. I think that this guy is probably going to deliver on it since he's going to be running evil archers, it looks like, and a Valkyrie. So, it could be a Goblin Drill deck. It could also be a Mortar deck like us. I didn't expect that archer to hit that Miter. I thought it was totally out of the vicinity, but a little bit unfortunate. Ooh, I literally almost dropped my Mortar behind my tower. If you guys have done that before, let me know down below in the comment section. It is one of the worst feelings of the game, especially if you're matching into a Royal Giant deck like we are. Because when we see Fisherman and Phoenix, it's telltale signs that a Royal Giant is right out of the woodwork. It's going to be popping through soon, and we're going to be catching that with Mr. Fisherman. Oh, wait, what? There's no way. Seriously? Is that, is that the strategy? Oh my gosh! Another Mega Knight player too? Wow. I've never seen a Mega Knight deck with Fisherman, in this meta at least. That's interesting. I would love to activate King Tower with the Mega Knight, but I felt like it wasn't going to work out because the Ram Rider was able to dissipate the rest of the Mortar. And if we Ice Spirit here, it's just not going to work. We'll pull it to the middle, the Mega Knight's going to die, and it just doesn't have enough health. If only we could grant the Mega Knight slightly more health to be able to pull it to the King Tower with the Guards, but it didn't work out in our favor. So I wonder if we can go for a Poison here on top of the Archer. It's a weird situation where I think going in for the Archer Queen is better. But at the same time, this man messed with my mental, and I thought that our foolproof plan of cycling mortars, going opposite lane, and engaging in minor poison cycle would be the way to win. But since we're matching into someone that's played a bit of a different deck that I've never matched into before, I might have to switch up my strategy. So I'm going to go for the Arch Queen ability, so we're able to guarantee that everything dies here. Melting that Valkyrie before it even gets a single shot on our Archer Queen is hilarious. And then he drops his Phoenix so far away from the Archer Queen, I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he wasn't thinking. I don't know what this guy's doing anymore. Yo, he, he's just zenning out, I guess. So we're going to Ice Spirit. We're going to go in for a Miner. We'll also hit him up with the Royal Ghost. I think that our strategy here hinges on the fact that we can go in for more poisons. If we can go pull for a poison on top of the Archer and then also the rest of his stuff, it's obvious to me that he's not going to be able to break through because we just drop our Defensive Mortar. We then go for a lower Archer Queen and then we eat the Archer from the other side because it doesn't matter that much. You always have to decide what damage is meaningful? What matters? And if you look at something and you realize it doesn't matter, don't defend it. You can defend the archer on the left-hand side and you would lose the game. Or you can decide, hey, I'll defend the big push that's barreling down on the right, and then we're in a pretty big advantage. So, strategy for us is probably go for a royal ghost on top of that. We can go in for guards since they do a lot of damage if we wanted. I can also ice spirit and use a zap and a whole bunch of other stuff if we need to. I think that doing this is ideal. We can definitely go in for uh, an ability if we wanted to, but I don't think it is necessarily mattering. Then I can go for a Miner. Then I can go in for another Moor, so then the Mega Knight jumps or walks towards that. So then we can use our Guards to finish off the rest of the Mega Knight with no splash damage hurting us. Also, this guy's got a lot of splash damage. I mean, he's got the Valkyrie, he's got a Mega Knight. The deck is pretty weird to play against. This really looks like the epitome of a mid-ladder menace. I'm going to Miner here, and then I can go in for the Mortar to shut down the Ram Rider. Even if he decides to spam us with the Mega Knight, I can Ice Spirit, and then I can also go in for an Archer Queen on the other side. 
So the cool thing that we have is the ability to shut everything down with a minimal amount of elixir invested. I don't love the fact that he played that super well though. Um, these archers are going to be a pain in the butt. And I do have to zap so that we don't lose the archers. Also, looking at that amount of damage that he just got, this game is becoming extra spicy. Wait, we can go for a mortar? I kind of messed that up. I don't know if that's in the right hand side. I don't think it is. Yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be targeting the correct lane. Unfortunate. We can still go guards. Should be fine. I wish that the mortar was targeting the right hand side because that would have given us a pretty sizable advantage to guarantee that we win this game. But I mean, I didn't get it. We go for a poison now and then we're gonna have to use our mortar on defense again. I don't know what side he's gonna go in. I think it's probably gonna be left and he does go left. Let's go here. Go ice spirit as well. I think that we're probably fine if we can get a good zap down. I don't know if we kill the Ram Rider. Oh my gosh. That was inches away from devastation, my dudes. That was so close to losing the game. All right, we're definitely gonna go poison. He's definitely gonna have some problems here if we Evo Zap. And then I think we can just continuously spam stuff because if you think about it, this mortar will be able to pull the Ram Rider and then we can poison and then zap and win the game. So our strategy all hinges on this poison coming down fast enough. I think it barely does. And then I think we win the game off of that one. Yeah? GG. All right, cool. <laughs> Any note of the banger with a bounce back when we were down and out, it looked like I was 100% screwed. But you never give up with this deck since you're out damaged your opponent's fireball or poison cycle of their own because you have a faster card cycle to get more spells and miners on the tower while they're just slowed down by their other cards in their deck. The Rain Rider Phoenix cycle impaired his deck, so he just couldn't keep up with our spam. Blast the like button with the baby dragon if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe for more daily content and have an amazing rest of your day.